What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Snowbike Mike, back with your after work recap for Friday, May 31st, 2019. Here are the top gaming headlines that you might have missed while you were working hard. If you like any of the stories that I bring to you today, please go to the articles directly and support those incredible games journalists around the globe. Story links can be found in the show description below, so let's get into it. Here are the top three stories that you need to know about. Story number one, Cadence of Hyrule release date set for June. This story from IGN.com by Tom Marks. The story reads, the hilariously long-named Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necro Dancer, featuring The Legend of Zelda, will be coming out sometime this June, according to a new trailer. The trailer comes from Nintendo Japan's Indie World Series and is currently available only in Japanese, but it also gives a brand new look at gameplay. This comes hot off the heels of a potential leak earlier this week that claimed Cadence of Hyrule would surprise launch on May 30th. Clearly, that didn't happen, but we now know it's not too far off. So, Nintendo fans, this could be a great game to be showcased at E3 and hopefully will be in your hands within the month. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, and it looks great. I highly recommend you go and check it out. The trailer, it is only in Japanese, but the gameplay is awesome to watch. Looks like a great time, and man, I can't wait to try to catch the beat. Story number two, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Labo VR Mode now available. This story from IGN.com by Adam Bankhurst. The story reads, Nintendo has released its latest version of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and it does bring VR to Smash via the Toy-Con VR goggles from the Nintendo Labo VR kit. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate can be played in VR in limited, timed, and offline battles and can be accessed via the games and more menu. Players can look around dozens of maps and watch CPU fighters battle it out. Additionally, solo players can battle the CPU in VR, but no multiplayer whatsoever is supported. All of my Smash fans out there, I can't get a read on this. Is this hot or not? From all the videos I'm watching, it doesn't look good. You're kind of far away, then you zoom in, then you're looking backwards. I don't think this is something that I would ever want to do. But if you do have the Toy-Con VR goggles from the Nintendo Labo VR kit, why don't you let me know your impressions? I would love to know if I need to strap my Nintendo Switch to my forehead to get this experience. Story number three, our final story for your Friday After Work recap. Call of Duty Modern Warfare DLC comes first to PS4. This story from GameSpot.com by Eddie Machuk. The story reads, The newly revealed Call of Duty game for 2019 Modern Warfare features some major changes to the usual formula. Crossplay between Xbox One, PS4, and PC, and the end of Season Pass formats. But one important aspect is remaining the same. As has been the case for the past few years, post-release content for Modern Warfare will launch first on the PlayStation 4 side before coming to Xbox One and PC. This was confirmed in a trailer for the game posted on PlayStation's YouTube account. The message states, quote, play new content first on PlayStation 4, end quote. The fine print goes on to clarify that the exclusivity period is one week. New playable content, when available, will launch on PlayStation 4 seven days prior to launch on other platforms. This matches the week-long duration in last year's Black Ops 4, which is less than a month-long window that Call of Duty games used to have. So there you have it, PlayStation 4 fans. You're going to get all that new content totally for free, mind you, seven days early before the Xbox One and PC side. Little interesting stuff, keeping the exclusivity, but a great partnership deal for Call of Duty and, of course, for PlayStation 4. I think the big win for all the gamers, of course, is crossplay and the end of season passes. This is going to be really interesting how much they add. What do they add? Do they ever charge you for anything? I'm very excited to find out what Call of Duty will do and will it change the games industry moving forward with similar like-minded games.
And with that, to end our show, here are a few things to watch over your weekend. Earlier in the week, popular Fortnite streamer and big-time online personality Nick Merckx left 100 Thieves and yesterday announced he is joining FaZe Clan. So now up on the FaZe Clan YouTube page, you have some great videos going in-depth on why Nick Merckx joined FaZe Clan. So give that a watch. Then on the opposite side, 100 Thieves has released Episode 1 of the Courage and Nade Shot Show, a fun podcast with those two guys and their first ever guest. Valkyrie, a huge Fortnite streamer and 100 Thieves content team member. So you guys definitely want to check out both of those. The podcast is super fun. It's light. It's enjoyable. I love those two guys, Courage and Nate Shot, and a really cool piece with Valkyrie, of course, part of the 100 Thieves world. And then on the opposite side, Nick Merckx being able to go in-depth on why he joined FaZe Clan. That was a really big announcement that happened Thursday into Friday, and you guys don't want to miss out on that. But this has been your After Work Recap for Friday, May 31st, 2019. It's your boy, Snowbike Mike, reminding you that if you liked any of the gaming headlines that I brought to you today, please go to the show description below. I've put in all the article links. Give them a click. Support those incredible games journalists around the globe. You have now been caught up to end your week and to end your month of May. We're heading into June. E3's right around the corner, and I will see you on Monday, gamers. Have a great weekend.